In this week's video, I want to show you guys five slightly advanced features inside of Prusa Slicer that will take your 3D prints to the next level. Hey guys, David here and welcome to Make a Software, the weekly series in addition to my project videos where I show you one really cool feature or software that will greatly help you in your DIY projects. To start off, I'm going to use this uh, 3D model of a Witcher desk riser, which is one that I sell in my store. And uh, first of all, a quick bonus one, uh, to place it on his back instead of rotating it 90 degrees, I'm going to click place on face and then you can just select uh, the back uh, if you actually hit the right face. But the first feature that I actually want to show you guys is that if you have a look here, uh, we have this fairly easy shape on the bottom. So I'm using a large layer height of 0.2 millimeters. But then here at the top, uh, this model is fairly detailed and you start losing a lot of uh, detail a bit with such a coarse layer height. What I can now easily do is in here, in the overview, click this little icon up here. And this will allow you to add variable layers. You can see this gray uh, kind of shapes. That is basically your layer lines that you will see in the end. And then here on the right, you see the print. If you hover over it, it highlights yellow which height you are. And by either right clicking or left clicking, you can add or take away extra layers. So by holding down the left mouse button here on the top, you can see it turns green. That uh, means that there are more layers now. And if you look close, the layer lines are now a lot closer together. So here, instead of 0.2 millimeters layer height, uh, it might only be 0.1 or even less. Uh, and uh, this will very easily allow you to uh, get more detail in the areas where you need it, but save time in the areas where you don't need it. Then for the next tip, we're going to use the same model and go over into the print preview. And you can see that this looks a lot more uh, defined. But actually, I don't want to print these whole the same color. But I don't have a color changing printer. And you don't need a color changing printer to uh, print multicolor. What you can simply do is take the slider here on the side that lets you uh, preview the print, uh, go to the first layer which you want in a different color. So here all of that I want in one color and then here on the next layer where it starts to draw the Witcher's uh, shape I want a different color. And then you can hit this little plus icon here on the side and this will add a second color. And you can see that it now uh, changes the coloring into uh, the version where you can see which is printed with what color. And it will now print all of this and then it will stop the printer, ask you to change out the filament and then continue printing with the second color. This way you can very easily achieve two colored prints on a very basic 3D printer. The third feature I want to show you guys is custom support. If you want to print this model, this is part of an Alien Queen model, uh, then you can see that this model will not be able to uh, be printed uh, without any supports. That is just uh, impossible overhangs to print. But if I print this with supports enabled uh, regularly, it will generate supports all in here and all up in here, which will not be possible to be removed. So what you can do instead is use the paint on supports feature. This will allow you to custom say where you want supports and where you don't want supports. By using the left mouse button, you can paint on where you want your supports. Blue means you want supports there. You can also change your brush size down here to, uh, if you want a larger area. And instead of saying where you want supports, you can also say where you don't want supports. So let's say uh, we're going to use a really big brush for that. Instead of uh, left clicking, which is blue, you do right clicking and you say here, all this area, I do not want supports. And then this will let the slicer know that when it's slicing, here it will add supports and here it will not add any supports. If you don't want to set everything manually on a model, instead you can also do, uh, by the way, you can remove selection here. It's so you can auto set by angle. This lets you uh, choose the, the threshold angle at which you want to create. Let's say oh, you only want like fairly steep overhangs. So let's say let's use 25. This will select these areas here then we can say enforce. But it still also selected some other areas. So to deselect those, we can use shift and left mouse button. And as you can see, uh, these uh, little blue, sp blue spots disappear. This lets you very easily decide where you want your supports. And then here you go, you can see that it uh, only created supports here for these uh, two little wing areas, but not all of these areas back here. Now, you still might have some drooping issues with these uh, blue highlighted areas, but it will be very hard to see these areas, so I think that's uh, much more acceptable than having support material that is impossible to remove. For our fourth tip, we have here another part of this model. I scaled it up a bit, but uh, you might find a model online that is just too large for your printer. 
uh, what you can use is selecting the cut feature. This will let you define a specific area where in, in your print which will uh, be used to cut. You can uh, select this cut area, you can say if you want to keep which part you want to keep, perform cut, rearrange and now I can print these and then later glue them together. Another thing where the cut feature can be useful is if you have a model uh, that has no really flat spot. Now this model here I could just put on this top here but then it would be some nasty overhangs. But if you look at this foot here uh, and we look at the print preview, you can see that there's only really this one point that actually contacts the build platform. So this will not print well at all. It will basically just be supports. But what we can do is we can use the cut and just move it down a lot. Move it up ever so slightly, you start to see, and let's say about here looks good. Uh, still most of the foot is here, but this will give you a big uh, flat spot. And then in this case, we do not want to keep the lower part, perform cut. And now you have a flat surface on the bottom of your pr print, which will make it stick to the platform a lot better. And then for a fifth and final trick, uh, let's say for the sake of argument, we want to print these two models at the same time. Here we have a very detailed, fairly small model. And on the other side, we have this uh, much uh, larger model that you might get away with a bit less detail. If you want to choose a layer height, for this one, I would use uh, probably 0.1 millimeter layer height, as you wanna really want to capture all that fine detail. Whereas this surface here would be perfectly fine with 0.2 and that will make the print go a lot faster. Additionally, this one here will definitely need a lot of support. Whereas with this one, you can probably get away without. So what you can go ahead and do is Select your model, then right click on it, and you can set different things separately. By clicking here on support material, this will now add an option of support material to only this model. And here I can select generate support material and auto generated supports. This will now generate support for this model, but not for that one. In addition, I can uh, also layers and parameters here. I can uh, say layer height for this one should be 0.1. And in that case, I also want more layers on the bottom, of course. You can see this very easily if I zoom in here. These are very thin layers here, while on the other side, uh, there is a lot coarser layers. You can also see the, all the supports generated here, whereas there is no supports on that model. And with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, leave a like down below. Also, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next week.